Now let's check in on how bond markets are faring with Simon Michel from Fig Securities. Simon, thanks very much for talking to us. Now, let's talk about uh, not so much the French election, but there is this impact that the Trump administration's tax reform could have or will have on bond markets, and we are expecting, what, a big announcement this Wednesday. That's absolutely right, Helen. Good afternoon. And uh, we've really seen a bit of a reversal of that uh, safe haven flow we had right up until about the middle of last week. And uh, in the last couple of days, we saw uh, people or investors happy to take on risk and move back into equity markets, move out of bonds, take some profit in those yield curve movements. And that's really been driven by uh, Trump... Uh, uh, communications that they've got a big tax plan coming. Um, there's uh, likely to be a release on Wednesday. Not a lot of detail around that, uh, but our investors are obviously happy to see a bit of detail coming out this week, uh, in addition to, obviously, some easing geopolitical concerns on that French election, as you've, as you've mentioned. Yeah, and it is interesting because I guess the, the risks of France leaving the EU, they have eased on this first round result? That's right, really. So Macron, really, who is, is anticipated to lead Le Pen in, in the next uh, round of voting, um, is pro-EU. So that uh, volatility that uh, was likely to emerge, should you see France also go down a uh, uh, leaving the EU, um, has seemed to have eased a little bit. Investors are a little more comfortable, likely to be a little bit more status quo. Uh, so I think investors are sort of comfortable with that, moving back into equity markets, as we're seeing. Yeah, so, Simon, do you think there's any possibility... I mean, I don't want to be the doomsayer at all, but is there any possibility that the market sort of is, is breathing this big sigh of relief, but, in fact, um, Madame Le Pen has a good chance? There's only now two candidates. Look, polls have not been uh, very well received recently, obviously, on the back of the US election. So, you know, there are, there are elements that uh, don't really uh, read a lot into the polls suggesting that Macron's about 20 points ahead uh, mm. on a two, you know, a, a, you know, two case basis. Um, but I think that, you know, it would, it's going to be tougher for Le Pen to get there, I think. And I think yeah. if you sort of take the votes uh, from those people who voted for the alternate two candidates, they've got to find a place to go. And I think you're probably going to see that's likely to support Macron over Le Pen. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Aussie yields. Now, they've gone higher. What's the story? They have. So they've basically also followed the US up. Uh, I think, again, um, investors feeling a little bit more comforted, uh, moving out of the safe haven flows, moving out of bonds um, and moving back into equity markets. We're seeing, uh, you know, increased demand for high yield bonds as well. That's pushing the risk premium or spreads on bonds down as well. And we saw that fall by about seven basis points. So really, I think, you know, if you, if you think about it, Helen, we've really had a month of, uh, you know, uh, you know, concern in market, uh, a month of, uh, you know, quite a bit of volatility. Uh, you know, bond yields out in the 10-year was down about 40, 45 basis points. That's a significant move. We're now seeing that unwind as some of these things work themselves through the system. All right, sorry. So the Aussie 10-year are at what? So the Aussie 10-year today, as we speak, is looking at 2.6%. Uh, That's up about five basis points and up about uh, 15 to 20 basis points from the low that we saw uh, back in March. Yeah, so how are you seeing the A dollar, US dollar? It's what, round just over 75. Yeah. It has been there, um, thereabouts, for quite some time. Do you think the RBA is happy at that level? Look, it's been bouncing around there and it's been sort of up and down a little bit. And I think, uh, you know, we certainly saw a little bit more demand come through as yields fell and that was an investors looked for additional yield over the US Treasury. So we generally get a bit of an increase in demand for Aussie bonds and you certainly saw that when they reached their lows. Look, I think the RBA is pretty comfortable. They'd obviously like to see it drift lower. They certainly don't want to see it drift higher. And I no. think that, uh, you know, if you were likely to see that, Helen, you are going to start to see the RBA talk about the need to perhaps look at lowering the cash rate. So, you know, I think that, you know, around that 75, as you said, it has been hovering around there. I think they're pretty comfortable. The Aussie, uh, or the RBA, I should say, really want to see the Fed continue increasing rates. They don't want to see any delay to that. Otherwise, it puts pressure on them having to maybe adjust our rates down. Yeah, all right. Well, let's talk a little bit about Aussie issuance. Now, 
Volkswagen are possibly going to issue? That's right. So not a lot of issuance around, but one interesting one is Volkswagen Australia, and they're looking to do an asset-backed uh, security issue. So this is essentially Volkswagen Australia Finance uh, selling off of their balance sheet uh, motor vehicle loans that they offer to their, their customers. And uh, so they've done an issue. Uh, the last issue was back in March last year, around 500 uh, million Aussies. So we're anticipating that they might be going to the market again over the next week. All right, Simon Michelle from Fixed Securities, always good to get your view. Thanks for joining us. Have a lovely day. Thank you, Helen.